So we're talking about another ridiculous development that comes out of the situation, obviously the ongoing war in Israel that's happening. Uh, we take us back to, you may remember last year, we discussed the fact that UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, we found out that many, many, and, and according to Israel, maybe even the majority, a hundred plus uh, of their workers, of their aid relief workers, were actually Hamas terrorists. That was a big deal. You saw that the tunnels that were built underneath uh, UNRWA, there were, all of these things were happening. And October 6th victims, families, filed a lawsuit. And the Department of Justice responded. And the UN responded. And they said, hey, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. We have ultimate immunity. Because UNRWA, based on a law from 1946, has every form of legal immunity, even though they admitted that they are likely or very likely participants in the October 7th massacre, the Israeli government insists that this is merely the tip of the iceberg. And if you keep reading this article uh, that came out, sort of the breaking news that came out, um, it, it's really horrifying that we're at a point where you can't even say that terrorists are terrorists. Now it's, oh no, they get absolute immunity. That's right. We've heard about absolute immunity a lot this year, mm -hmm. but n not normally about terrorists. And yes, we understand that the U.N. would maybe try to protect themselves from a lawsuit. But when you have the Department of Justice writing in a brief in this case, it says uh, because the U.N. has not waived immunity in this case, its subsidiary UNRWA retains full immunity. And the lawsuit against UNRWA should be dismissed due to lack of subject matter jurisdiction. That is your Department of Justice, folks. That is your tax dollars writing this brief, arguing to a U.S. court that the victims of October 7th, more than 100 of them that have filed this lawsuit, have no jurisdiction to bring it against the terrorists that perpetrated this against them. Because the UN and its subsidiaries and its officials and everyone involved has full and absolute immunity. I never thought I'd be hearing the DOJ yeah. writing a brief asking and trying to prove that someone has absolute immunity. But that's what we're seeing today. Yep. And uh, this is coming from this article that said Israel has told its top donor countries that hundreds of UNRWA local staff are active. Hamas or 13,000 local staff are active Hamas terrorists, including school teachers. And this is a, a quote that came out. Um, they said, we provided much evidence that UNRWA works hand in hand with Hamas. They are useless at aid distribution, useless at education, except for glorifying suicide bombers and encouraging Jew killing. And Israel sees no rule, no role whatsoever for UNRWA in Gaza after this war ends. Professor Hutchison, I wanted to bring up the irony a little bit here that the Department of Justice is is arguing this in court, in federal court here, that these UNRWA employees are enjoying uh, absolute immunity because UNRWA and the UN haven't waived this immunity. Meanwhile, this is the same Department of Justice that went all the way to the Supreme Court arguing against immunity for a former president saying no one is above the law. Uh, I'm confused about their their legal uh, philosophy here when the former U.S. president can't have immunity for official acts uh, while he's president. And we've heard from every single Democrat, I believe, that that made him a king, that he has immunity from official acts. But yet we have this international body that now can escape justice for literally committing terrorism and massacring Israelis at a music festival because of a treaty from 1946 where they were granted absolute and full immunity? Well, it is a bit ironic, but it's also important to keep in mind that the Biden administration has generally favored foreign citizens over American citizens. So the Biden administration is quite willing to contest um, Donald Trump's assertion of immunity with respect to criminal uh, cases in the United States. Uh, the, uh, Joe Biden has said that no one is above the law, uh, but apparently the Biden administration is quite willing to support the United Nations even when the United Nations hires staffers who participate in a massacre, 
They participate in murder. They participate in rape. Uh, that is apparently all right yeah. with the Biden administration. So this is, in my view, a bombshell development because it informs the American people that the Biden administration prefers to go after U.S. citizens and prefers to allow foreign citizens or those individuals that are uh, employed by the United Nations to escape liability. Keep in mind, UNRWA has a staff of 13,000 at least, and uh, according to some reports, hundreds of those operatives are engaged in terror and in support of terror, and the United States government is sending or has sent funds to UNRWA. So indirectly, the United States is supporting terror campaigns against Israel and then saying, oh, if you participate in these terror campaigns, uh, we will assist the United Nations in claiming absolute immunity. It is highly ironic, but it's also important to keep in mind this, this is in keeping with the Biden administration's approach to life. Right. The Biden administration is often incoherent. Look, there's a long legal tradition uh, where UN workers, uh, diplomats have immunity. But that's only so long as they're doing their pr proper function. When a, when a diplomat commits a crime, when a UN worker uh, acts outside of their scope of duties, um, they're no longer immune. And these were people acting as terrorists, providing material support. Indeed, that's the charge, material support to terrorism. It is, it is confounding to me that our DOJ wouldn't understand that and wouldn't prosecute these people who have not only killed Israelis and uh, worked alongside others who have committed terror acts, but they are continuing to hold and threaten American lives. Uh, we denied in the Trump administration. We took money away from UNRWA. This administration had restored that funding and has really put America in a bad place. Uh, the Department of Justice is, is taking the the words of this uh, agreement, this treaty, if you will, from 1946, I believe that the 40s, yeah. yeah, that was establishing the conditions of of the United Nations, and it says in it, it says the Convention on Privileges and Immunities of the United Nations, adopted by the General Assembly on February. 13th, 1946, that they talk about the United Nations shall enjoy immunity from every form of legal process uh, insofar as in any particular case is expressly waived its immunity. It shall extend to any particular case. So they're, they're going by the words of the treaty, and that does have the expressly waived its immunity language in there, of which I feel like the Department of Justice should have filed a, a amicus or some sort of brief stating instead hey the language is in there you need to expressly waive your immunity here because of what happened are you even shocked at this point that this is what we're doing here we're talking about immunity but of course we're talking about immunity for hamas terrorists